Thanks for stopping by, guys, and welcome back to Gearbox. Now, today, I'm going to be taking a look at another car that I've been building. I just finished this one last night after doing the video for the red car that I had created. So this has quite a few improvements, including I did fix the suspension and the steering issue from the previous version already, and that has been applied to this car. But just in general, this has been an upgrade. Basically everything in the car has been improved in one way or another. So real quick talking about specs. This has a small block V8 that goes into a three speed plus reverse transmission that then goes down to the wheels. You can drive this in two wheel or four wheel drive with a simple selector. And two of the main improvements I'm really proud of is the transmission itself is much more compact, but also the aesthetics of the vehicle. I tried to do a lot more work shaping the car and making it look nicer, um, particularly in the interior. Um, one more thing I do wanna add before I actually jump into the seat, this car does fully work with energy consumption turned on. So it does have the gas tank, the battery, the alternator, everything you need for it to function like that. And as we hop into the seat, you'll see a number of little indicators on the dash and the thing that I am most proud of, the actual shift indicator. This for the most part uses the exact same controls. One turns on and off the parking brake and you will notice it does light up the drive indicator. Two turns on the front differential, which enables the four x four light. Three holding starts the engine. If I press it again, it'll turn the engine off. Hold again, engine turns on. Four is for the headlights and tail lights. And let's turn it into drive, let's head forward. And if I press R, I'll shift into second and the little indicator moves forward. Shift into third. Shift down. And it just works. I'm really happy with that, especially the shift indicator. It looks so lovely. I'm going to go ahead and slow this down a little bit. Try, try not to roll it. Top heaviness is something I need to pay attention to on my next car. The suspension rides really high on this. So let's go ahead and pull this back over. There we go. Um, the top speed for this car is 84 miles an hour. However, past about 60, 70, it starts to get a little squirrely. Um, as you can see, I probably should put more attention to the brakes because as soon as I put on the brakes, it just locked up and wanted to roll. That is something I will have to work on in the next version. Um, and a little detail I didn't even think to mention, this has a full exhaust hookup. The exhaust actually runs from the engine out to a tailpipe. It's a little thing, it's a little thing, but I love it. So let's get the engine back going. Let's turn the lights on. You can see the exhaust is ever so gently puffing from the actual tailpipe. Turn on drive. Let's actually get back into first gear. Second. Third. And let's go back into the interior. This was built to be driven from inside. However, it is a little loud in here. Let's go ahead and shift back down into second. Ooh, starting to struggle. Uh, the little numbers that are indicated up here are the first and second gear uh, speeds. So usually you want to shift from first to second at 25, second to third at 55. Because 55 is the top end of second. So we can just press. Get into third. I, I will never stop loving that little red notch moving.
it drives pretty well. There is, like I said, there is a little bit of issue that still pops up with the steering above like 70, 80. So I'm actually going to let off the throttle here because it's not liking steering right now. Oh, oh. <laughs> and there it goes. Oh, oh, we got to no. Oh, thought we could roll it over. All right. Let's head back to the little flat open area and I will take a look at a ripped over version of this. And here we have the car opened up so you can kind of see inside. I didn't completely remove everything from it. Up front here is the V8, the small block V8. All of the air intakes are into a single valve. And if I can get under here, oh, I need to raise this up just a little bit more. There we go and freeze it. All of the exhausts come down to these two pipes that come down and actually connect underneath the flywheel. And then those are routed down and out. Basically just go right under the driver's seat and all the way out to the tailpipe. There's the gas tank. The actual transmission here, one of the big improvements between this and the last one is instead of using a um, servo motor to run a rack and pinion, this is just using a linear actuator. This is not only much more compact, but it also prevents a situation where with the servo motor, it could find a phantom gear essentially because there was no limit to how far forward or how far back the servo could actually run it could try and force itself into a third or fourth gear that didn't exist. However, with the linear actuator, you can set physical limits to the extension. All of this power runs down into clutch that by default sends all the power to the rear axle instead of the front axle. As soon as you engage it, power then gets transmitted to the front. Um, on this one, the parking brake is directly in line with this. That way, there's no transmission backlash, which if you notice on my last car, while it was sitting in park, it'd like to rock back and forth. Putting it down here on the actual transfer case eliminated all of that. And if we come up top to the transmission, that little arm here that pushes the gears along is just directly connected to the actual uh, to the actual flag so whenever the gears shift forward it just pulls this along and it just sticks out the top of the transmission it's literally just a flag directly attached to the gears which is really simple but really fun yeah um, I don't think there's much else to show. I will, however, go ahead and show off the car running while it's hovering like this so you can actually see the transfer case uh, disengage and re-engage the front end. So here's just rear wheel drive. Oh, I have the parking brake on. There we go. And as soon as I hit two, I brake, still in full wheel drive, press two. Now we're just two-wheel drive. I'm very happy with this. Um, one of the things I didn't actually note when I was looking at this, um, when I mentioned that I was doing a lot of work trying to make it visually aesthetic, I did make sure the feet actually fit in the floorboard space. Um, the feet don't stick through the vehicle. They are actually tucked into, tucked into the actual floorboards. It's... I love this game from a mechanical perspective, but once you start merging the mechanical with the visual, I think is where the game really shines. Some things that I would love to see is I would love to see some more like sensors and other applications because while these little digital displays do work for some things, there are also other applications that I don't know a way to read an output for like um, engine RPM, maybe if I need to know a servo's position or something like that. I know some of those are in the game, but I just wish the game had more sensors and more logic to play with. 
So, that being said, I think I am going to end it out here. I'm going to start this up one more time. Go for a little drive. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace. What? <laughs>